Howdy folks, Kirk and Jason here with Kirk Giordano Plastering. Today we're going to show you what we're doing today. We're doing lime plastering. And the fella who owns the house, he said, well, gee, we had a lot of people working on this and I want it back the way it originally was. Now, this is a hundred year old house. Now here's what it originally was, guys. I left this just so I could prove a point because how can you fix something unless you know the history of it or why it broke? This is old wood lath that was used um, 1800 up to about 1919, still used to 1930. Um, now, our new plaster will adhere to this because we put this pink bonding agent. It's called Plaster Weld. You could use quick crete bonding agent too which is sold at home Be depot but jay and i we usually go to the plastering material yards where you can buy uh more mat you can buy the i like say plaster weld for interior or weld crete for exterior because it's colored you can see if you missed a spot anyway let me give you a brief type of history of what they have here and how we how we're going to fix it you guys can do it your which way but We've been doing this forever. Now, back 40 years ago when I was working with a union shop, I used to work with a fellow named Old Man Whitey. He was named Mr. Whitey. We called him Old Man Whitey. But anyway, we'd have the wood slats like that. And then what he would do is we used Structolite. Structolite is a volcanic ash. Uh, they heat it up and it pops like popcorn. But what that volcanic ash mixed with the gypsum does is it acts like a, a sound insulator, uh, insulation, fire insulation. And, and when I say fire insulation, I mean up to four hours before it starts to burn. If the house is burning forever, it's going to burn too. But that's what this stuff is here. That's uh, uh, Structolite, which is still used today, hospitals, schools, uh, uh, buildings of that nature, um, a lot of police station, even racquetball courts. So what's this stuff, guys? I already painted this, or Jay and I already put the weld, the plaster weld over it, but I thought I'd leave a little bitty spot to show you. This is what we used to call white coating. And back when I first started many years ago, uh, like say if I was working with Whitey, he'd say, Kirk, mix me up some, we're at a stage, mix me up some white coat. And what I did was I would get some lime plaster and put it on a board and make a little hole in the center. And in that center, we'd put the water and let the lime absorb the water. That way it didn't clump up. That's what this shiny stuff is. Okay, so what I'm going to do is put a bonding agent on this shiny stuff. Why? Because we're going to recoat it. And to recoat it, it has to adhere permanently without the integrity being beat up. So that's what we do. Now, there's a lot of holes here and there. And, and guys, I can give you 15 different ways to repair these holes. The, what we're going to do is I'm going to put a lime plaster base coat in here. And the lime plaster base coat will set in about 20 minutes. So I'm going to... Uh, repair this one and I left it wood lath so the plaster goes between these slats right here and it adheres it kind of mushrooms through but if you don't have that guys don't try to buy this because you're not gonna find it use mesh mesh wire and then screw it in and again uh, allow yourself a little bit of the bonding agent so you don't get hairline cracking after it settles now this guy here uh, this electrician he did something a little a little wonky a little weird uh, he put sheetrock in here. They had some issues outside. They corrected it. Everything is corrected outside. And so he put sheetrock right here, and then he put another product here. Not sure what that is, but I'm certain it's a, it's a hot mud, like um, uh, a gypsum-based product. And that's okay. You can put a gypsum-based product on a lime product as long as you put your bonding agent. So, oh, handy Andy here. We're going to fix his work too. We're just going to feather it out. And then what we're going to do is we have a choice. We can put a base coat around everything here, but it's, it's already solid, guys. It's locked in. So we're going to put a base coat in a few areas to feather it all in. Then we're going to put a lime finish over it. 
And what is lime finish? Um, it's limestone. They get the limestone, they heat it up, and they used to make it a, a slack putty. Today they can put it in powders. And when we add water, guess what? It turns back to lime stones. So we can make rocks with it. But in this case, we're going to go back over everything because there's too many imperfections. They had, um, I don't know what they had here, but it looks like they might have had some veneer, wood, or they shot it insulation. They have a lot of weird stuff going on. So we're just going to put another coat of lime finish over it. And the base coat has sand in it for strength. And the fella just asked me, he says, Kirk, what about this crack over here? I'll show you. I mean, there's many ways to skin a cat, guys. <clears throat> he says, you're going to put mesh here? I said, I could. But if I put mesh first, how am I going to get that lime plaster in here? Two ways, there's a lot of ways to do this, guys. You can put a polyurethane caulking in first, then allow that to set, put a bonding agent over it, and go to, go to town. Or you can fill it up first with lime, and then put mesh, and then cover the, that. I'll show you how I'll do it. Since we, he asked me, he says, well, you know, I, I kind of partial to the, the caulking you guys use in your videos. So I thought, okay, well, let's show how we do that. And what we do, guys, is we put it in and squeeze it in there. Then take the old magic glove and get it in there, guys. Get it in there. It doesn't have to be uh, pretty because it's going to get a coat over it. Anyway, that's, that's more or less the happen because of vibrations. Vibrations on plastering and stucco work is like kryptonite to Superman. It's just not good. You open and close this door, vibration. They did a lot of work on the outside with hammering it. Vibration. It calls that nasty, unsightly crack, but it's petty. It's, it's really not a lot. Anyhow, uh, we're going to go ahead and uh, Mick Jay's going to mix up some base coat. And we are going to fill all of these. Then we have to take lunch, allow that to set because it, set times depend on the weather. So I figured about oh 20 minutes and we've already spent a lot of time here covering everything and prepping everything so we don't bore you with that kind of stuff anyway when we get uh ready to do the the plaster i'll show you all right guys diamond base coat and it's almost set hard as a rock ah it's almost set now i'm going to fill this up just to prove a point guys all right i'm going to take some of this and I'm going to go this way. I'm going to push it into the keys. So it's pushed into the keys. Smooth and pretty. I'm going to take some more of this stuff. Push it into the keys. Okay. Then I'm just going to make it pretty. Because diamond base coat is much stronger than the finish coat. Because it has sand in it. Uh, the diamond finish coat doesn't have as much. Anyway, Jay was saying, Dad, you're, that's getting long-winded. You've done these before. All right, this has got to set. Okay, guys, we wanted to show you how we apply it, but we got beat up. Sometimes the material sets too fast because it could have been set at the material long, over a year. And sometimes, like right now, we had that hurricane going and it was raining outside, but it's 100 degrees in here. Anyway, we put this on and Jay and I had to hustle. It took us a half hour to put it on and then two hours to trowel it down. I'll show you, if you're still watching this, how we trowel it down. Um, let's see. We're applying it now and we're, I'm putting on only... Uh, an eighth to a quarter. Uh, specifications, they say a sixteenth. Well, we're going over some heavy stuff, so that sixteen does not apply. We put it on as heavy as it's needed to cover up whatever we're trying to cover up. And they had a lot of holes here, a lot, a lot of weird things, so we just improvise. You guys... There's a lot of rules to this stuff. I recall when I was working union, we get the new guys and they would be in a room and then we'd go, oh, holiday right there. They'd be in a room, we'd go in there and they were sweating like a slave and we'd say, ah, it got away from you, didn't it? Well, 
payday because it got away from us today. And because it did, we had to use a lot of muscle. Again, guys, we're, we're plasterers first, and we show how we do things just so you guys can get an idea of how it's done. Okay, so what I'm basically doing, guys, is I'm putting on um, about a quarter inch. And when this gets hard, we're talking about rock hard. So we either have to trowel it on when it's ready, and which <laughs> it was ready earlier, <laughs> too ready. We had to use a lot of muscle instead of, sh instead of skill. The mark of a beginner or an apprentice, but it happens. We got a lot of plugs here, so we got to go a lot heavier than I generally would. But guess what? You go a lot heavier than, say, that whole sixteenth of an inch. Well, it'll shine when we bring back the fat and trowel it down. A couple rocks in here. Yeah, this uh, material has seen better days, but we put it on how we get it. If we get it from the material yard and it has issues like this, we just put it on anyway. Uh, we whine about it, but we put it on. Okay, so that's see all these little rocks, guys. The bag was rocky. Okay, so I've got that done. Now I'm just putting this side on. Upward motion, hitting it here. And the beauty of this material, I think I got a little carried away earlier, but you can go as thick as you want. It has a lot of benefits, but if you play with it a lot, it'll tend to blister. So just put it on, guys. Make it as pretty as you can get it. That's why I'm using this. Big trowel, I can get it pretty without a lot of trowel marks, except right here where this outlet is. It's testing my patience. Okay, so that's it. All right, guys, we are done with it. We're out of daylight also. Uh, we were going to show some different things, but we didn't have the time. Anyway, like Jay says, folks don't hire us because we make good videos. They hire us because we do good work. It's kind of like that old commercial back in the 50s where it's Charlie. It's a sun kiss. Uh, Charlie says, now sun kiss doesn't want tunas with good taste. They want tunas that taste good. Reminds me of what we're doing here. They only care about our work. Anyway, my name is Kirk Jason on the camera. We thank you guys for watching, and we'll see you on the next one. All right, folks, we want to thank you all for watching. If you enjoy the videos that we put out, please like and subscribe so that we can keep making these videos for everybody. And as always, from the, from the entire, entire Giordano family, family, we'll, we'll see, see you on the next one. one.